We're picking up right where we left off with the previous video. And what we want to talk about next is, uh, before we get into doing actual problems with these things, is the fact that energy is also related to wavelength and frequency. Okay, and the way this works, uh, sort of as a general um, sort of evaluatory thing, um, if you want to decide whether or not something has a generally small energy or a generally big energy, and it's most easily relatable to the frequency. So if I have a big or long wavelength, then I have a small frequency, and that equals a small energy. If I have a small wavelength, then that means I have a big frequency, and that means that I have big energy. Okay, and the way that we, um, we can calculate this energy is with a lovely equation, E, so the energy, equals H times nu. So this is the energy of one photon in joules. Okay, and we did, we used joules in a, a few problems in the previous chapters, but really just sort of abstractly talking about that as a unit. But now we're actually going to use it in, in our calculations. Now H is another thing, um, another constant called Planck, Planck's constant. Okay, and it has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. All right, so hopefully you're comfortable using scientific notation at this point in time because we're gonna do it a lot in this chapter. And then nu is still our frequency. And it has the units of seconds to the minus one, or we can think about it again, we can one over seconds. All right, so now that we've covered all of that, and actually before I go on, I wanna talk about one more thing. So. If I take my equation for the speed of light, and let's say I want to solve for frequency. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to get frequency by itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, whoops, C equals lambda times nu. If I want to get rid of that lambda from the right-hand side, what I can do is if I divide both sides by lambda, as long as I do it to both sides, it's okay. Then my lambdas cancel out on the right side, and what I get is C over lambda equals nu. Okay, and this is how you can rearrange these equations at any point that you need to, right? So if this is true, then I can come back to my energy equation. It says h times lambda. If I substitute c, oh, excuse me, h times nu. If I substitute in, then that means that e equals h times c over lambda as well. If I take and I plug that part in right there. Okay, so we have lots of different ways that we can relate things to each other. So let's get into doing some practice, okay? And this will make getting into our slides that much easier. All right, so for our practice problem, it says that a beam of green light has a wavelength
of 500 nanometers. What is the frequency? Okay, so our equation that has wavelength and frequency in it is C equals lambda times nu. Right, lambda is our wavelength, nu is our frequency. So if I take and rearrange that equation to solve for the frequency, if I divide both sides by lambda, my lambdas go away. And so I get C over lambda equals nu. Now here's the trick. The units of C are in meters per second. And right now, my wavelength is in nanometers. My units have to match. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is a convert lambda to meters. Okay, and our conversion, so one nanometer equals 10 to the minus 9 meters. So 500 nanometers, I'm going to put nanometers on the bottom because I want that to go away, and 10 to the minus 9 meters on top. My nanometers will cancel. So this equals 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, or if I do it in correct scientific notation, to the minus 7 meters, 5.00. Okay, so now that I have everything in the right, um, the right units, I'm going to plug these things into that equation. So remember I had C over lambda equals the frequency, nu. And C is a constant. It's 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we're going to divide that by lambda, which we calculated as 5.00 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. All right, so our meters will cancel. And that means that I'm left with seconds on the bottom. So when I calculate this out, I get an answer of, wait, I lost it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Sorry, 6.00 times 10 to the 14 inverse seconds. Or we'll say 6 times 10 to the 14 seconds to the minus 1, or I can just say Hertz HC. All right, let's do another practice problem. So in this problem, we say that a photon has a frequency of 7.50 times 10 to the 14 hertz. All right, remember that hertz is the same thing as 1 over seconds or seconds to the minus 1. Okay, so our questions are, we have two questions. So first, what is the wavelength? And the second question is, is what is the energy? In joules. Okay, so our first question we can answer pretty quickly with the same equation that we just used. So we have C equals lambda times nu. This time I know what nu is, I want to find lambda. So if I get lambda all by itself on both sides, I divide by nu on both sides. 
So C over nu equals lambda. Okay, so this time I don't have to do any converting because all my units match because I have meters per second on top and one over seconds on the bottom. Okay, so seconds and seconds go together. No worries there. So I'll have 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and divided by 7.50 times 10 to the 14 inverse seconds. And that gives me an answer of 4.00 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And let's say if I my question was more specific and it said, what is the wavelength in nanometers? Okay, so now I've got it in meters, so I'm going to convert it to nanometers. So I'll have one nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters. So this comes out to be 400 nanometers. All right, so our second question, what is the energy in joules? So our energy equation was E equals H times nu. All right, and we already know what nu is. We're given that in the problem. And H is a constant, Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And we have our frequency, which was 7.50 times 10 to the 14 inverse seconds. So our seconds will cancel out. Seconds times seconds on the bottom will cancel out. So I get an answer in joules. So our final answer here will be 4.97 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now, I want to reassure everybody that most people, almost everyone, lives through this section of the semester. And this will probably be the worst section for scientific notation of the entire semester. You just have to grin and bear it. And if you have questions, please ask. Okay, for our next video, we'll start up with the beginning of our chapter four slides.